Welcome back to KSP 1.4, making history. And I need more money. <laughs> I need lots more money. 426,000 is not enough. So I was having a look at the missions and I was talking about the Ike mission last episode, but we've got quite a lot of time for that. Curbing to Juno next is one year, 242 days. I could time warp, but um, we want to fill that with some other missions, I think, and get a nice healthy surplus here. So for that, one of the options that we got is build a new orbital station on a solar orbit. So that needs at least uh, room for nine Kerbals. It needs a research lab, it needs antenna docking port and generating of power and needs to be in orbit of the sun. For all of that, we will get pretty much uh, 300, 400 grand, pretty much. Uh, that'll be pretty good. We get some science as well, a little bit, not very much, but let's get that one up and running first. So let's head into the vehicle assembly building and see what we can build. So here's a nine Kerbal station launcher. Hopefully, we'll see. It's got 6,887. Hopefully, that's enough to get us out of, uh, well, escape velocity out of the Kerbin system into the Kerbal sort of orbit. So, if we take the, this off, you'll see what I mean. Uh, I've got some long range antennas just for future in case anyone wants to visit this uh, or we want to communicate with it at all. Uh, you know, regular antenna, we've got this sort of high gain antenna, and then we've got the large one here uh, on top. In the bottom, we've got a couple of things. One is an inline stabilizer, just to be able to turn this. And an octo, because we, this isn't going to be manned when we send it up there, it's going to be unmanned. And I should probably think about putting a docking port, docking port interface on this, but um, should we? Hmm. Might be worthwhile, but if we do so, we're going to have to put struts. Have to put struts. There's just no way, two ways about it. So docking port, uh, oops, wrong way. There we go, docking port, and um, we can just get away with the separator, I think. So two and a half separator. And then the whole thing is going to be strutted because that is not going to be anywhere near rigid enough for this sort of setup. So let's just grab this. And can we attach it to here? Um, I'm not going to be able to get the option out of my... I need to just remove that for a second first. Then select the mode on symmetry. And we'll just put lots and lots of struts there. <laughs> Hopefully that will do the job and uh, won't cause any problems. In any case, we can put that back on. And that's ruined my... It's ruined something. What is it ruined? So take off. Uh, yeah, all engines firing. Separate. Lose the fairings. Yeah, so these two need to be in this stage. And that finally. So there, there we're back to 6,700. And we should be okay. So let's think about that one. That is 82 grand. Did I take that mission? I hope I did. No. <laughs> need to take the mission before doing it. There we go. Is there anything else that we can get done? Um, science data or any, any science data? From orbit of the sun or something? No, maybe not. Let's see if there's anything we can put on this that how we haven't already got for solar orbit. Just science stuff? Let's have a look. Science. Um, well, we've already got the processing lab on board. We're not really going to be going into any atmospheres, so uh, we could put a survey scanner on it, but we're not going to need that, I don't think. And again, that's actually pretty large. <laughs> we probably want a dedicated craft to do something like that. And uh, maybe we should do that separately. It's not very heavy, it's just very large. Okay, so let's save this and make sure there's no crew in it. Yeah, it's the usual thing when you have lots of seats. It tries to automatically fill those so let's launch it and see if it takes off here we are on the launch pad we still unfortunately don't have mech jeb's uh, ascent module because we chose the nuclear engine over it so sas on and away we go slowly <laughs> all right so i'll see you heading up towards orbit with no need to show the rest of this you've seen this craft launch before so uh, onwards to orbit Okay, and we're coming up to our circularization maneuver, so that is not very far at all. You'll see this thing is counting down now. We're on our maneuver node. We only have an octo, not a hex, 
so I don't have much advanced steering here. I'm flying it all manually, so let's just do it now. I was a little bit late, but it doesn't much matter because we have enough fuel in this stage. In fact, we have more than enough fuel, so we may even use part of this stage to get us um, outward away from Kerbin. So you'll see there is our track and it should be quite comfortably in place. Let's uh, just keep on going. You'll see I've also extended the solar panels and the sort of mid-size antenna rather than our large antenna. And we just, yeah, we're pretty much fine otherwise. So let's just keep pointing at that maneuver node. Not very far from it at all now. And up comes our periapsis. In fact, we've more, got more than enough that I'm going to stop this and dump it in the ocean. So let's just wait till we get... Uh, there we go. And then I'm going to disengage. That can go into the ocean. And then I'm going to throttle up. And that'll take us into orbit, which we now have. With essentially a full tank and an AJ-10. So we don't have to be terribly precise here. All we're really looking for is an orbit around the sun. So uh, if we just turn ourselves around there and zoom back in. We want a maneuver node sort of roughly around this kind of point at a maneuver. What is that? Oh, has it still got a maneuver on here? Yeah, let's go and clear that. Add a maneuver here and let's just drag this out. So 1115, more than enough to get the escape velocity. And uh, in fact, we can see where we get where we end up with this thing. Uh, let's just zoom out. So you see, that's more than enough to send us all the way past Juno's orbit. In fact, the next planet out is essentially Dress. And uh, yeah, um, we can get, I guess we can just keep on uh, keep on going with that. So if I just grab the maneuver node, uh, how much Delta V do we have? Well, we have enough to get, get ourselves out to Dress. Uh, it's on a different tilt than us, unfortunately, but we can do that without problem and uh yeah why not let's just go for that gets us out and away from uh from Kerbin. so off do we go to the maneuver node and it's in 13 minutes so that won't take terribly long at all i'll just skip us forward until we're there now while i'm still using the aj10 stage on this we could definitely use that nuclear engine here it would be uh probably less thrust but uh, would certainly give us more Delta V as a whole on the rocket. But for this moment, I just reused that previous launcher. May as well. No wobbling problems because of the, the struts keeping everything straight. And uh, this is going to head out there now. So that is going to be pretty much set. Shouldn't take it. Well, it's 105 seconds. Yeah, let's get forward, shall we? <laughs> and here we are with 20 seconds of the burn remaining. You'll see... Our orbital path is already well, well out there. And there we go, just finishing off. We could, I guess, even try and plane change this, but I'm not even going to try. Um, it's perfectly fine as it is having a solar system out uh, a solar system, a solar, solar station out there somewhere. Okay, so that's done. And while before we leave, we should probably just extend this antenna. Okay, and uh, is that going to cause a power problem? Let's just get out from behind the planet. Hopefully not. Come on, out from behind the planet. There we go. So, no, nope, that'll be fine. No real problems. There's the sun. And we've got a station out there now. So, that uh, needs to be in orbit around the sun. So, we just need to head out to escape. Warp to the SOI change. And it sometimes has a bit of a problem getting all the way to that. It slows down far too much. So I'm just going to close that warp off manually. Let's try. Oh, it's trying to correct it for me. I don't want you to. Give me control. There we go. And there's our mission complete and we have 740,000 great so we got a solar station us uh, yeah a solar station out here and it's gonna be just fine so we got a home for 
kerbals if they ever need any. Fine. Um, what should we do next? More money or some science? Hmm. Okay, so we have this other escape option to Eve. And one of the missions that we have are, well, it says near Eve, but we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how well this is. Using that Sentinel infrared telescope, um, yeah, it wants us to track some asteroids. So it, mass spin process will happen passively over a length of time as long as any active Sentinels are near the specified orbit. So we need an infrared telescope and we need to reach a certain orbit and map 10 asteroids. And we get some money, but not, not a huge amount, to be fair. So, well, in fact, I'm just going to accept that because I need to be able to see where the orbit is. Duration is 30 years. Let's take it. Let's take a look at the tracking station and let's see if it's going to give us a path uh, for this. Is the orbit in here? It says near Eve. That's Eve. Am I just missing it? It's entirely possible, but I don't see... You know, oh, hang on. Is it further out? No? Hmm. Where's the orbit? I just took a second... When I selected a craft, it then showed up, so that's fine. Maybe I just needed to select a craft. So there is our target orbit. In essence, that probably means we should leave around about the time we want to leave for EVE anyway, because it's just outside of EVE's orbit. And it is, thankfully, rotating the correct direction. <laughs> uh, Anti-clockwise, that is, looking down from the top. And that should be relatively reasonable. So why don't we look at rebuilding our sort of uh, expedition ship, but with that telescope and then with obviously nuclear engines okay so here's our expedition ship it is currently based on a manned option so i think we probably want to replace that with an unmanned option so that's our pod nothing wrong with a pod as such but remember i just moved all the stuff onto here temporarily i think we can get rid of that to be honest and then we want the hex i think uh, it's the same weight. And this gives me a few more options, prograde and retrograde. Okay, so if we just base it on a hex. Where have, it, where have you put the hex? Ah, is that it? Yeah. That's it. There we go. Let's move that up. All right, and then we just want to map, map stuff on it, really, and it'll be built onto the top of this. So we're going to want that infrared telescope, certainly, and that's going to be in here. Look at the size of it by comparison. Uh, that needs to that needs to securely connect there. There we go. So, <laughs> yep, huge, obviously. I probably want to put plenty of batteries on this thing, just to keep everything nicely ticking over. So let's just put some batteries underneath. And they can usually form the body of a, you know, an actual probe, uh, which means we can think about putting some solar panels on here. Um, maybe three. And maybe another set of three at some point. Yeah, we'll see once I've got everything else on there. Let's just assign those actions while we've got this up and running. So one, toggle the solar panel. And then we need to think about some other things, don't we? So we're going to need a, a low range antenna. Just while we're taking off. So let's just reduce that. Spin this around and we'll put it in between these solar panels. And we're going to need longer range antennas as well, but we'll wait till the rest of the stuff is attached for that. Won't worry about it just for now. Um, I guess we're going out into solar orbit. We might think about various other bits and pieces. What we might well do eventually is just to rendezvous with Eve and bring it in it bring this in close enough to Eve to get some science. Hopefully. Which may mean we should probably think about putting some goo cylinders on here. Um let's maybe put three. Uh, if I just space them out on either side of that. Like that. Yeah, they're facing the wrong way. Aren't they supposed to symmetrically point into the middle? They just don't like doing so. Hmm. Okay, then we're going to put two. You still don't like it. Eh. That's okay.
Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we've got three there. They will do just fine. And then maybe you should just put, uh, as usual, just in case. Not that it should be particularly useful, but um, we will put... But let's move those around to be in between the solar panels. Just so I don't block anything off. And we will put a barometer... Oh, no, that's not a barometer. Barometer? Barometer. On there as well. There we go. Is there anything else we can fit on here? We're not going to move on to the surface of anything. We might be able to get away with a Science Junior, you know. Because this thing is going to be pretty powerful for its size. Can we get away with two? Hmm. Alright, so that's 13,000 Delta V. Yes, we can get away with those. We can get away with that just fine. And in fact, we don't even need some of this. So let's just go take this off for a second. We're not going to need to return this, so we don't need a heat shield. And technically, we don't need to separate it, but that, though, these may be stuck onto the rest. Uh, are they? No, we don't need to separate this. So now will you reattach? You will. So we could remove those up if we wanted to, but that's still fine. Over 14.7k 14, 14 here. Hmm. And this is quite long now, so I think we should probably think about strutting this together uh, with some struts. So let's just grab those struts. And again, let's choose the symmetry mode first. And have them like that, I think. All right, and then this top section is going to need to have its fairing rebuilt. So let's just delete that. Build a new fairing. Yep, yeah, and all the way up. That's quite a long rocket. Can't really collapse a lot of this stuff, though. Maybe the batteries, but then I guess these these science juniors will have to act as the holders for all the other stuff. Yeah, why don't I do that off camera? One second. Okay, so I've rearranged that a little bit. The craft is a little bit nicer now in terms of what it looks like. I'll turn on the SAS. Let's get going. And in here we've got a few extras that weren't on the previous section. So we've got some extra batteries, we've got uh, the antennas that I previously took off from the, the last save of this, and then we should be able to use all of this to get uh, to get where we're going. Now one of the, the problems I saw in, when I was looking in the space center off camera is that the uh, geosync, or well, kind of geosync <laughs> at the moment, um, the range of satellites that we've got up there, case yes, one, two, and three, I think they're called, uh, are problematic. They are, they've processed while we were out at Juno, and that means that the two of them are right next to each other, and one is a little bit further ahead of them in the orbit, but there's a significant black spot where we can't actually communicate with the base. So um, there's a problem with this. So I'm going to send this up fairly high. We've got the extra Delta V to do that. We're going to go up, you know, into the hundreds of kilometers rather than a low orbit. And that hopefully should give me less dead spots. I don't want any, any issues with getting that going. So you'll see we're running fairly high at the moment rather than a typical kind of uh, orbit where we'd head, head for around 80 kilometers or so. I'm uh, not turning this over quite as much, but I'll be heading up there into orbit. I'll see you once we're there. Once this, this fairing has come off, then you can see a little bit more of the craft. Okay, so I've burned this first stage out completely. Our apoapsis is up in 600, 600 kilometers or so, yep. Yeah. So we're gonna lose our fairings and we're gonna lose this stage and we should be clear. So all that will drop eventually back down to the surface. I'm gonna press one to open the solar panels. Now they are all on one side just because of the way this thing is arranged. So of course we can just tilt that around. Uh, there we go. So they all have nice, well, mostly nice, apart from the shadow of one on the next one, uh, visibility of the sun. And you'll see we've got an inline stabilizer here. Uh, that's actually still rotating a little bit. Inline stabilizer there. I added that one and I had some batteries right here. So we should have enough battery power. There we go. So that's fine. 
and we've got a nice signal strength, but we do want to extend some more antennas here. That's our fixed antenna. Uh, I do have another one around here. Let's extend that one as well. And eventually we're going to want to extend uh, the, the largest one, this one. I'll do that before we leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. So out here, we're going to want to circularize. Don't need to, but we may as well. We've got more than enough Delta V to do that. And now we can just get MechJed to execute that maneuver. So we've got, uh, we need 700 Delta V. We've got 2,315. That's more than enough to do this. And around we come. Just need to make sure we can get adequate solar power. And it's coming up in 11 minutes, but that won't take it very long. It's about to time warp out there. And hopefully we shouldn't lose signal strength back to the surface. If we do, that's a real, real problem at the moment until I fix. If you have a look here, uh, where are the satellites? Two of them right there, KCS1, uh, two and three. Two, three right next to it. And KCS1 is there. So we're all right here because it'll bounce, but we've got direct access at the moment. So the advantage of going so high on the loft of your orbit is that you'll keep track roughly with the ground. That is going to sweep by us, however, so we can't do that forever. Uh, but it won't take us very long to get to a circular orbit. And from there, we don't... Uh, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this already. I did mention about hitting the transfer window. We don't actually need to do that um, because we're not going to get to EVE, certainly not on this initial pass. We could try for a flyby, but yeah, it, we could probably do with a dedicated craft for that anyway. We get more than enough money for this one. So instead, we just have to leave on the right angle. So while that's circularizing, the right angle is basically just to head the opposite way. So if we turn around this way and come back in... We're sort of at the right place right now. We could keep burning, but I'm not going to. I'm going to obviously wait for one orbit for that to, to occur. So wait, wait, let's wait for this to finish. And there it goes. In fact, that will do. Let's just abort that. And then we'll set up the next orbit we'll maneuver here. And um, you see, I can't see the destination orbit. That's really annoying. But I'm going to try and get close to it anyway. About there would do us. Another 722. We've got more than enough in this stage. And here's the burn to leave Kerbin behind. So we're now heading out towards Eve. Ish. <laughs> so that won't take very long at all. And I'll see you once we're on uh, out into the, basically the sphere of influence of the sun. OK, now Sphere of Influence has changed and you can see where our track is. It's right here. And this is a destination orbit. Now, honestly, I did not know where this orbit was. I just visually eyeballed it. And that's pretty accurate <laughs> where we need to go. So, yeah, uh, I will just create another. Uh, that's the ascending node, descending node. It's zero and zero. So that's fine. And then we're just going to want to adjust the orbit a little bit this way. So if we just go out to the APO and then let's get rid of this display. Uh, we're going to want to set our orbit. Uh, whoops, we're far too small there. Uh, we're going to need to bring it in, aren't we? So let's just bring it in by the hundreds. And back to tens. And we're going to need to adjust that a little bit by radial. And we need to shift this around to the other, other direction a little bit. So again, we're OK to spend that amount. We want to bring our APO in line with the periaps here, and then we'll bring it in with some prograde. Now we have to shift to even smaller units now. It's getting very, very close, so it's getting very finicky to actually do this. OK, I'll tailor that a little bit more, but essentially we'll have to do that next maneuver once we're all the way around there. So that's going to be a fair amount of time warping. Um, yeah, so we're going to be out there for quite a while. OK, here you can see with a large antenna and with MechJeb just aligning us ready for the burn, we are perfectly fine to communicate back to the surface all the way 
from out here. We're, we're really quite far away. Uh, well, I guess not that far away. <laughs> it's come around with us. We are still going faster than it, though, so we will get further and further out uh, the more we actually do this. So here we come for the burn. And that should be in a few seconds. Again, this will burn, use up most of our remaining fuel. And the rest is all the nuclear engine. So we can use that for to move the satellite elsewhere in the solar system. And that'll be quite useful, I think. I want to have uh, sort of all long range craft to have this, to be honest. It's very, very nice to, to use. So let's see how close this is going to be to our orbit. Reach the designated orbit within reasonable deviation. Uh, you'll see that the our planned orbit here it is. We've already reached it, in fact. But I, uh, I wanted a even more accurate than that, so uh, the, the last few hundred of it getting perfectly to where it was. And then it says, map 10 asteroids threatening Kerbin. Hmm. It says that should happen automatically. Here comes the end of our burn. You see our signal strength has dropped. We are a little bit further away. So if we just start object tracking here, is now massive asteroids reach, passing near Kerbin orbit. And the dog next door wants to have say, hello, I'm a dog. Hello, I'm a dog. Back in a second. And of course, while we're out here, we do want to wait for our batteries to recover, but we should be able to use material study just fine and transmit that back. So that's one of them open and we'll get 13 science back. Eh, not quite as much as if we did a full recovery, but yeah, that is uh, going to make it essentially unusable anymore. But we should get that back on the surface and we can just close the doors. Cool. So how long will it take to map asteroids? Mapping the process will happen passively over a length of time as long as the active sentinels are near the specified orbit. They don't need to be newly launched. You'll receive progress notifications as suitable asteroids are mapped. So at this point, I can't really do all that much to influence it. So we're pretty much done here. We've got this out where we needed to get it. And we can head back to Kerbin. So there we have two missions in one episode. We've got not quite 300 science yet, but we've got 700,000. So we've got a solar station and we've got a infrared telescope out there all in an episode. So I'm pretty pleased with that one. If you've liked it, feel free to like, subscribe and share. If you want to receive more notifications, remember to click the bell next to the subscribe button, particularly if you wanted space engineers, well, not space engineers, uh, station ears, notifications, etc. Make sure to click that. Um, YouTube system is just a bit crazy about whether it notifies you anymore about new episodes. And of course, we'll see you next episode, probably for some more money generation, uh, maybe with a trip at Ike. Uh, we did spend about 220 days there going around, so we've got room for maybe one more mission before we have to head out to Juno again. And then, of course, we can get out to Ike while we're there. So hopefully you join me for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.